A good creme brulee is hard to beat. Normally, I wouldn't like something like a creme brulee for one particular reason. Once you get into the middle, every bite's pretty much the same. And I don't like foods that are all the same. By this, I basically mean that the entire time you're eating a creme brulee, you're basically eating something that's the consistency of a pudding. And it's not like there's usually anything special inside there. You don't really get one soft and chewy part and then a crispy part later. All there is is that really satisfying torch layer on the top, which is the hardened sugar that you can crack. And yes, for a couple of bites, that gives you a little bit of crisp. But after that's gone, you're basically just eating a really tasty, creamy pudding. Now, with that said, don't get me wrong. I love creme brulee. And I think there's ways around the challenge I've just posed. So based on what I've told you, and against all odds, I somehow love this dessert. It's so, so creamy. You get that amazing vanilla flavor, and it's caramelized up top with a little bit of texture from that sugar. Now, we're going to be making this today, and that by itself is special. But today also happens to be my birthday, which means I want to add a little twist. Now, I'd say there's two little birthday surprises I have here. One of them is more of a gift to myself, but more something we're realistically only gonna use for our videos. So in a way, it's actually kind of a gift to you. It's definitely gonna spice things up in the kitchen a little bit. And the other thing is perhaps a lot more special. We've just hit 2 million subscribers, which is the best gift I could ever possibly ask for. In fact, I don't think I ever got to show you our silver and gold play buttons. So the one right here is for 100,000, which we got quite some time ago. And to show you some perspective, this right here is the 1 million plaque compared to the size of the 100,000 plaque. Now our gold play button, it's simply not messing around. But it should definitely say something about all of you as opposed to just my name on here. Oh look, I can see Manny in the reflection. Manny, wave for us. Anyways, in honor of hitting that 2 million, I want to give something back to you. So I'll be giving away a three Michelin star dinner for two to a lucky winner I select in the comments below. And for you to have a chance to be selected, it's really simple. I want you to go to the comments, tell me what three Michelin star restaurant you'd go to, who you'd bring with you, and your reasoning behind it. Maybe why you'd want to go, why you'd take that person, whatever you want. Then my team and I will sift through all those comments and pick a winner. I'll put some more details in the description below about it, but I'm super excited because I know how much you all appreciate food and I want someone to go enjoy that experience. And this will be the first of many. I'll announce the winner in the description below as well as in one of the next few videos. Now, without further ado, let's make some creme brulee. Now I'm gonna be making a little bit more than you might be making. And that's because I'm using this massive baking dish that normally you use for a tart or a quiche as opposed to a creme brulee. But don't worry because in the description below, I'll make the recipe the exact same thing, but just scaled down for what you'd probably need. Now to make enough to fill that entire dish I just showed you, I'll need to separate out about 18 egg yolks. I know this will probably give me throwbacks to the time we separated out 100 egg yolks for that pasta a little while back, but this shouldn't be nearly as bad. Now I'll separate out my last egg yolk and place that in my bowl. What we end up with here is a selection of beautiful yolks. And let me just tell you, if you have never run your fingers through yolks like this, you have to do it. You are genuinely, seriously missing out. Now first, I'll break these bad boys apart. Now into these yolks, I'm gonna add one and a half cups of sugar. Now first, I'm gonna mix this up just enough that it's evenly combined here. And I have to say, I love the color that you get from these gorgeous yolks. It's almost like this bright neon orange. Now it's time to add our vanilla because a very important part of a good creme brulee is seeing all those little individual dots from the vanilla beans. That's how you know it's a good creme brulee with real vanilla. Now this right here looks like a ship in a bottle, but in reality, it's my homemade vanilla extract. And funnily enough, if you can tell, I put all my vanilla beans in here already. So what I'll be using instead is a pure vanilla bean paste. And I like this way better than vanilla extract because it's basically a bunch of scraped vanilla beans suspended in this liquid. One of my professional baker friends from the UK said this is the only thing they use there. And now into my egg mixture, I'll add about a tablespoon of this vanilla bean extract. It's very expensive stuff, but this is a special occasion, so we need to make sure we put enough. Nothing is ever a waste with all of you. At this point, we want to whisk it up until it's a bit lighter and a bit frothier. We're trying to begin letting the sugar dissolve a little bit while also lightly whipping up these egg yolks just a bit. Once this is a little bit lighter, you can set it aside and we'll get our cream ready to go. Now into my pan here, I'm going to go in with six cups of heavy cream. Don't worry if that was just a little bit clumpy. Sometimes if it's been shaken up a little bit or that kind of thing, that can happen. We're now going to turn up the heat here and let it go until the edges start to boil just a little bit. Once this very, very lightly starts to boil, turn off the heat. Now to clean things up a little bit, we'll pour that egg mixture into a bowl. And then as you whisk, slowly drizzle in that cream mixture. Keep in mind, the cream is extremely, extremely hot and it can and will make scrambled eggs if you don't whisk fast enough or pour it in too quickly for that matter. But once you've started to temper those eggs and get them used to the high heat here, you can start pouring a little bit faster until all of that cream is combined. Eventually you have your creme brulee mixture and you're ready to bake. Now over a tray and into our baking dish, we'll pour in that creme brulee mixture. Sometimes I even strain it to get out as many air bubbles as possible, but it's okay if you have a few in there. Fill it up as high as you want because it won't really expand as you cook. Bake it for about a half an hour or until it looks a bit more firmly set. But there's one last step. 
Before pushing it all the way in, we'll pour in some boiling water until it's about halfway up our ramekin, or likely in your case, all of your ramekin. Once you've filled it up with that boiling water, close it up. Now you'll bake that at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 35 minutes. And depending on your oven, maybe even a little bit less. What you want to happen is that it sets up a little bit so that you can then leave it in the fridge and it'll be that nice creamy consistency. Now, while we're waiting for that to bake, let's open up that little present I was talking about. We've been torching things a lot lately, so I thought I'd get us a real flamethrower. I mean, why don't we torch things in style from now on, right? I know this sounds crazy, but I really think this is gonna step things up quite a lot when we have to torch anything. I mean, this is a pretty cool and practical birthday gift. In preparation of the fact that we are going to be torching these creme brulees with an actual real life flamethrower, I have to coat my table in aluminum foil because I really don't wanna get kicked out of my apartment. And once this is all well coated, I feel a lot more comfortable. Now, once our creme brulee is set and is perhaps a little bit jiggly, oh my God, we're gonna take just this part and leave it in the refrigerator for at least two hours and ideally overnight. Now, while we wait for that to cool off in the fridge, we're gonna go grab a few more creme brulees. And I know that sounds crazy. We don't really need any more creme brulees right now, but I'm actually gonna go take a trip specifically for you because a lot of people are obsessed with hearing creme brulees crack. And I just wanna get a bunch so we can just whack them all with spoons and hear all those nice crackling sounds. So really, I'm just taking a trip to go get more creme brulees for some ASMR. Be right back. So like I said, everyone, we are literally driving right now to go pick up more creme brulees because we need them for that ASMR. I just wanna be able to go all the way down the line and just whack a bunch of creme brulees on that table. It really is one of the most satisfying things out there to just give it that first tap. And I feel like it'd be great if we just did a bunch of them. Manny, stop filming. Okay. okay. Stop filming. Okay, okay. Oh, all the creme brulees. Okay. Yeah, just all five. Thank you. <laughs> we got the goods, baby. Let's roll. Like I said, we got those creme brulees. And they're definitely nothing crazy, but the important part is that we're gonna be able to torch these and break them all. And we're gonna have so much fun doing it. Now let me first say that the place that made these clearly already attempted to torch all of them. They did a terrible job. And what this needs is a simple flamethrower. It's time to torch. Now you can see here that we have a variety of creme brulees. These ones, of course, a little bit smaller and not homemade, but more for the ASMR. While these two right here, both made by me. Now this one clearly went a little bit over. I cooked this longer than I'd honestly want to, but really what you're seeing here is just the top part that's got more golden brown color than we want. Inside this we'll have that same white creamy creme brulee. This one's definitely better, but either way it doesn't matter because we're going to cover them all in sugar. First, we're gonna do a nice big sprinkle of sugar all over everything, which is gonna give us that crust. Go ahead and be generous with that sugar. Maybe dance around with it a little bit. This is your time to be creative and let that sugar fly. You're almost like an abstract artist right now, painting from super high up. Now I'll individually coat each of the smaller creme brulees, making sure to evenly spread that sugar across each of them. And at this point, I think you know what happens next. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. <laughs> This is extraordinarily dangerous, and I urge you to not try this at home. For the first time in history, we will be brulee a creme brulee with an actual flamethrower. I just want to evenly go across my entire creme brulee to get that nice even coating. We want to go slow and steady here so as to not burn any part of this creme brulee. If you can see it in the middle there, it's starting to get that nice golden brown color that we're looking for. I'm starting to smell this amazing sugar that's caramelized, and that's exactly what we need from this flamethrower here. I hope you do realize that this is the start of something very special, and that we'll be using this flamethrower from now on whenever we torch anything. It's okay to get a few dark spots in there because that's just more flavor. Now, after quite some time of torching this creme brulee, we're gonna have this beautiful golden brown shell that we have to let cool and eventually can smash with a spoon. And now that we have the beautiful golden brown shell in this one, I'm gonna move over to my other creme brulee and start torching. I really have to make sure there's a nice Wait, even. Why did you buy that? Is this a, um, this is a flamethrower. That could cause a huge fire. Yeah. Yes, I'm actually starting to get a hang of this thing. This is such a good birthday gift. Now once I give each creme brulee a final kiss with our fire, they're all perfectly toasted and I'll let them sit for a minute to harden. Now before doing anything else, I always love berries with a good creme brulee because they give a little bit of the acidity and tartness. It's also just a bunch of different textures and flavors to work with. So quickly, I wanna plunge these and then rinse them off in our gorgeous see-through pot. Now at this point, I just wanna say thank you to all of you and perhaps most importantly, cheers to two million. Let's hope this is just the start of a very long 
journey. It's pretty warm over here. It's like a fireplace. Now, if you made it this far in the video, you're clearly here to listen to these things crack. And I know there's gonna be that one person in the comments that puts the exact time that I start cracking them in there. And that's fine. If you wanna skip to that part, do it. You're gonna miss all the funny jokes. But for now, I wanna give you a little baby taste of what you're about to experience in a larger scale back here behind me. Clearly, it's very, very hard. Oh. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> Kyle, you're fired. Right here, you can see that it's perfectly intact, and here, I'll do my first crack. Oh, that was good. Okay. <laughs> now we can chop it up a little bit, get some of that deliciousness inside there. Perhaps take a little bite. Mmm. Ah, but everybody, we haven't even begun. I know this is all set up and you probably want me to do this part right here first, but before that, I'm gonna lay these smaller ones out to show you how strong the ones underneath are. Because we torched them with a flamethrower, we got a pretty thick crust going on here. So first, let's crack these little ones. Oh, that was a good one. Now congratulations, you've finally done it and made it to the main event. I'm not really gonna talk my way through this, but listen. Look at all those pieces that come out of this. These beautiful shards that come out of this creme brulee. I would disagree if someone were to look at me right now and say that I'm messing it up because I like to mix it all together, fold in some of those shards, and then eat my creme brulee. And yes, I know that sounds a little bit weird, but when you pick it up and get a nice mixed up spoonful that has some shards and some of that amazing custard, it's truly a magical thing. And did you see what I mean about having that perfect consistency despite having a slightly golden brown top? My point there is don't freak out if yours gets a little bit more brown on the top than you might want. It's okay. With this one right here, I'm gonna do the same thing and stir it up. The vanilla beans like to sink down to the bottom. So this is yet another reason to really kind of mix it up and then be able to pick up a nice piece and see all of those amazing vanilla beans inside. It's time to try a little taste of one of our amazing creme brulees. Gotta be one of the best foods out there. It is so extraordinarily creamy. It is soft, it feels luxurious in your mouth. But then you get those nice crunches of that beautifully caramelized sugar and the sparks fly. <sighs> Now before we finish, because you guys know how much I love my hamster pesto, I just woke him up from a little nap to try out some of this creme brulee. Pesto, why is your leg hanging out here? Put it back in. I wanna do a little test to see if I raised a good boy. I already know that I have, so either way he's gonna be a good boy, but I wanna see if he picks the dessert or the fruits next to it. So Pesto, tell me what you want. Guys, keep in mind, hamsters aren't really supposed to have that much sugar, so I'm gonna probably pull them off pretty quickly, but at least I wanna give him a little taste. And I wanna see if he'll take home a berry or the actual creme brulee itself. All right, he looks like he's diving for a decision here. He's licking the cutting board. I think he's pretty heavily going after the creme brulee and he's eating the edge of it right now. He bit clean through the middle of the actual thing here, but I'm gonna let him take home a blueberry because I know how much he loves blueberries. Oh no. Because I know how much my little boy loves blueberries. And in the meantime, we'll see you next time, Pesto. Thanks for trying. Well, honestly, this creme brulee looks fantastic. I'm gonna take one more little bite with my berries here just to get that full birthday flavor celebration right now. That really is a ridiculous, ridiculous thing to taste. All of it just comes together so incredibly well. And you saw how easy it was to make. Maybe next time, instead of a birthday cake for someone, make them a massive creme brulee. I'm telling you right now, you simply can't go wrong. But in the meantime, I wanna remind you not to forget entering that three Michelin star dinner for two giveaway. Because I really wanna see you go out and experience something like that, especially if you haven't before. But seriously, tell me your story. Tell me why you wanna go do it. I'll pick someone and I'll make it happen. And hopefully whoever it is will send me a little clip of their experience that I can weave into one of the videos down the road. Maybe this can become a tradition because I kind of love it. Last but not least, thank you, thank you, thank you again for 2 million because that's extremely, extremely exciting to me and it's kind of crazy to think about how fast this all happened. In the meantime, I'm just gonna work on continuing to crank out these food videos for you because I'm having so much fun doing it and I know you all love it. For those of you that might be here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications button because like I always say, so many of our subscribers have notifications on and that's really exciting. That means you're all really happy to be here and I'm happy to have you. In the meantime, I'll see you next time.